Uh, but we've been talking about the kingdom of God and the reality of the kingdom of God. Uh, it's the, the topic that Jesus preached on more than anything else. Uh, Jesus and John, we talked about, they, they both started their ministry by saying, repent for the kingdom of God is here. Jesus spent time in his ministry unpacking or, or presenting the kingdom of God to those who would listen. He did that many times in, this, in, in, in parables. Uh, we've looked at some of those parables along the way, beginning with the reality that Walt started or shared in worship. The kingdom of God is like a man who found a treasure in a field. He went and sold all that he had. He buried that treasure, went and sold all that he has, and bought the field. Uh, there's, there's incredible treasures in the kingdom of God if we'll look for it. The reality is, is the kingdom of God, there's something powerful, not just for you, but for those that are around you, if you'll dig and seek in the kingdom of God. The next week we talked about the truth that the kingdom of God was like um, the store owner or the homeowner that went to his store and he brought out good or old treasures and new treasures. That we can find the truths of the kingdom of God in the word of God. That by the spirit of God who's placed inside of us, when we read the book, I can't tell you how many times in this series I have conversations about, about churchy things with churchy people that I'm referencing the kingdom of God because my mind is looking through that lens right now. There's something when we read the word of God in the lens of the kingdom of God that brings about revelation and understanding. The last week we talked about the structure. Remember the structure? Simon says is what we used. I mean, it's too simple. But there is a kingdom structure. That structure looks like there's an absolute authority, which is the Father. That he gets to say and tell us what we need to do. Our position is to do what John and Jesus said, repent and be submissive to the will of the Father. That's the kingdom structure. He wants to be king and he needs us to follow. He wants to speak. He needs us to listen intently and radically obey what he's saying. That's, that's kingdom structure. And today is the sermon. I know we love this sermon. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one we like because we're Americans and we like to know what we get out of it. Right? I mean, isn't that what it's about? I mean, we all we look forward to what do I get? Uh, and this today's sermon is it's called Kingdom Authority in my notes. But, but last week I paused at the end of the service. And I want to begin with my pause. Because I, I'm convinced that without kingdom submission, there is not kingdom authority. I'm convinced without repentance in aligning ourselves with the Father, we will not have kingdom authority. If we do not submit, if we do not listen to what the Father has said, if we haven't repented and put our allegiance in a new kingdom, that's his kingdom, not in the kingdom of this world, we will not have kingdom authority. I'll come back to that because it's so important. We like kingdom authority. It means what do I get to do? What, what power do I have? Who doesn't like to talk about what power they get? Yeah. I want to get to the power. But the power doesn't come but through him. So we're going to read a story. Uh, it's in the, in the book of Matthew. Is where we're going to be this morning. Matthew chapter 16. Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But, but what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? It's a great question for you to wrestle with this morning. You see, it starts with submission. Who do you say he is? Question Jesus is asking his disciples. There's this, all this stuff going on with Pharisees at the beginning of this chapter and all these things that are happening. And he's saying to his disciples, hey, who do you say I am? They're all saying these different things. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. What a picture of kingdom authority. We've all been there. I think, well, some of us have in the room. 16 years old, remember that time? When we finally got the keys to the car? When we finally got the keys to freedom, to not being dependent on mom and dad anymore to take us where we needed to go, 
Peter's having this moment with Jesus. Jesus is talking. He said, who do you say? And Peter speaks up because that's who Peter is. And he says, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus' response to Peter was, wow, you're blessed. Why was he blessed? Where did he learn that from? This wasn't your duty to be a man. But my father because of Peter's acknowledgement of the position of Jesus Christ. Who Jesus Christ is, that really is what repentance is, right? We confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. We believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and we're saved. That's what Peter is doing. He's saying, I recognize, I've learned who you are. You're the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. Jesus says, hey, that wasn't just revealed to you by men. That was revealed to you by my Father. So guess what? Because of that, you are going to be blessed. How are you going to be blessed? You're going to be so blessed. Then what? The gates of, of Hades, the, the, the power of Hades will, won't prevail against you. So I'm going to give you the keys and not just to the car or the camel. Don't try to start a camel with a key. <laughs> I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. You know that stuff that I've been teaching you about the whole time. These years that you've come and followed me, and I told you I'm going to make you fishers of men, I'm going to give you these keys. But those keys were only given once again after there was submission. Hear me. Hear me again, and hear me again. Without submission, there is not kingdom authority. Peter's confession and acknowledgement of Jesus Christ is what allowed him to look at Peter and say, here are the keys. Without our submission, if we haven't wholly submitted to the Father, if we haven't wholly submitted to who God is, this sermon could be very dangerous. Because sometimes we want authority without submission. That's fine. We want power without providence. That's that powerful preaching right there. That's keys, that's good. We did gold star in classes for that. We want power without providence. We like to talk about what we can do. And you know what I'm going to see in Scripture is that, that oftentimes, we'll get to that, this is two points down the road, that oftentimes with authority comes self. Many times when it comes to, to kingdom authority, we see self Rise up and God be pushed aside. So why did Peter get the keys to the kingdom? What were these keys for? What was the purpose of the keys? Now it's funny. I don't have it up here because it's just not a good preaching point um, for where I'm going. Uh, I'm not trying to change the word of God, but it wasn't the right time. So in verse 20, which isn't here, if you've got your Bible out, it tells the disciples, Jesus says immediately after Peter got the keys for calling him the Messiah, the instruction from Jesus is to do what? Hey, don't tell anybody that I'm the Messiah. Okay, so, so there's a reason for that. The reason is it wasn't the right season for that to be revealed. But later on, Jesus comes back to this whole authority piece. We know these verses. It's in Matthew chapter 28. The reason he gave Peter the keys, the reason that we have authority today is to reveal the kingdom of God. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's saying this to his disciples. Therefore, you go and you reveal my kingdom wherever you go. You've got the keys to the kingdom of God. Peter, remember those keys I gave you? Now it's time to use them. You're going to tell people now that I am the Messiah, that I am the son of the living God, that I'm the one who came and died so that you could have life, that I'm the one that we remember at the table. He said, this season is now. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. And he's looking at his disciples in that moment, and he doesn't have a keychain now, but he says, I'm giving you the keys. I need you to go and make disciples of all nations. The reason we have kingdom authority is for others. Yeah, there's a benefit for me in the, the authority that I have for Jesus Christ. But the reason that Peter was given the keys, the reason that, that the disciples are, are, are given the authority of Jesus Christ was to do what? To reveal the kingdom to those 
those who don't understand it. That's the whole point of the authority that we have. The authority that we have as, as servants of the king is authority to reveal the kingdom of God, to open up the way to the kingdom. How do people usually understand the kingdom of God? <clears throat> Most of the time, remember this family that's kind of talked to this morning a little bit in Sunday school. Most of the time we learn through others. Right? Most people aren't going to turn into Pastor Steve's podcast. They're not going to listen to the sermon that he preached last Sunday. They're going to talk to someone who they know. Someone like you who's in their life. Someone like you who God has given the authority. He's given you the key. What does the key do? It opens up the kingdom. You're the one who is the key that opens up the kingdom to the one that is the way to the life. You see how that works? See, the point in kingdom authority is to reveal the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ came and he preached uh, the kingdom of God is at hand. And he spent time trying to unpack this kingdom to his disciples. And then when they finally got it, guess what he said? It's your turn. You're going to be the one through which revelation comes. Luke chapter 9. This authority can be pretty powerful at times. This is about the revelation of the kingdom. It's not about the, 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 the function of self. Jesus called the twelve together. He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out. Why? To proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Driving out demons. Curing diseases. Healing the sick was for the purpose of proclaiming the kingdom of God. Taking kingdom authority where it was needed. Taking kingdom authority to places that needed it. Yes, there's these cool things that, that we have as children of God. But as, but as followers of the Almighty, He gives us authority over, over demons, over the devil. Over sickness. James 4 talks about this. Submit yourselves to God. See, it starts with submission. Kingdom authority has always begun to begin with submission. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, sometimes we say we're not strong enough, we can't. If you're a child of the Most High, you have the authority in you to submit yourself to God, to resist the devil, the one that seeks to kill, kill, and destroy, the one that speaks those things at night, the one that says those, says those things, says those things, says those things that you don't want to hear, the one that torments you, you have the authority in you to submit yourself to the Father, and He will, it says, it doesn't say He might, it says the enemy will flee from you. That's part of kingdom authority. He seeks to, to steal, right? He wants to rob your understanding of the kingdom. He wants to take the authority that the Father has given you from you. He wants to, uh, to, to, to steal what, what God has given you. Luke chapter 10, Jesus is sending out. This is an awesome revelation. He said to them, the harvest, you can read this whole chapter, I gotta condense it some. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This is exactly what Jesus is doing in Luke chapter 10. He's taking 72 disciples, and he's sending them out. And he's giving them authority, like we see in Matthew 28. And as he sends them out, he says to them, when you enter town and you're welcomed, eat with them. Eat with what is offered. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. He sends us out to reveal the kingdom. That's the purpose of kingdom authority, the revelation of the kingdom of God. But when you enter a town, you're not welcome to go to the streets and say, even the dust of your town, we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. You, you be sure of this. The kingdom of God has come here. And then he, then he talks about the, the damnation that comes on those towns of those who don't, who don't really, who don't receive them. I'm not going to go into that. But look what happens when they come back. Now think of this, there's a lot of time, there must be time between verse 1 or 2 and verse 17, right? So Jesus is sent out 72 with what? Kingdom authority. And he's told them what to do, he's told them how they will do it. The 72, they returned with joy and said, Lord, now this is funny, because he just said this would happen, right? The 72 returned. They've been walking in kingdom authority. They've been submitted to Jesus. They radically listened when he said to them, what? Go to all these towns. Don't take anything with you because I'm going to take care of you along the way. They listened to him and they radically obeyed everything he said. Simon says, do this. They did what he said. Gee, that was crazy. 
We went to towns. And there were like demon possessed people there. And when we talked to them, the demons submitted to us. And then he said it. Man, that was crazy. They had joy. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit will submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You see, when we radically submit, the kingdom of authorities will go to our lives, and sometimes we might be surprised at what God can do through it. This isn't just for the 72. I'm not sure how many are in the room. Some would say it's for the 70 that are here. This isn't just a message to those that he sent out then. It's a message to those that he's sending out today. It's a message that says to us, we have to listen to what he says. We have to go where he tells us to go. We have to do what he tells us to do. And then watch out. It doesn't seem as though they went looking for demons to cast out. Does that make sense? They went to do the will of the Father. And then they were shocked because even the demons submitted to them. Can you imagine that? Like they're just walking down the street and all of a sudden some voice screams behind them, a crazy voice because that's the way it's got to be. It says, I fall out because of Jesus Christ. I, I, I submit. Can you imagine when they laid hands on the sick and the sick were healed? Can you imagine when they trampled on snakes and, and whatever else because the Father told them to? Now remember, I'm from Kentucky. When they got some church services in Kentucky, you know what I'm talking about? You ever watch it? Google. Google Appalachian Pentecostal churches. And they pull out the snakes. I was watching a video one the other day. Some dude had a snake. He was holding it. They said, your faith is enough. The snake's not going to bite you. His face was bleeding. By the time it was done, they took him out in an ambulance. <laughs> you see, there's a time that kingdom authority feeds self rather than Savior. You know what Jesus' response when they came back and said, oh my gosh, even, even the demons submitted to us? He looked at them and he said, you know what, don't be so excited about the demons being submissive to you. You should be more excited about what? That your name is written in, in the book of life. That your name is written in, in, in heaven. You see, because at times we get so focused on self and miss Savior. See, because with kingdom authority comes kingdom responsibility. That's the problem when they get kings to kings. What happens? They usually get a speeding ticket or they have a car accident, right? I remember in my life, this is a little bit of my journey, uh, I had a 1985 Ford Escort. It was my first vehicle hatchback, navy blue. It was my mom's car and she gave it to me when I turned 16. Um, anyway, I got to drive it to school. That was cool. I got to drive to school finally. I didn't have to drive a block like you do here, but like you had to actually drive to school, like miles. Um, that's besides the point. And so, like the first day of school, I was driving to school. I'm a cool guy. I think it was the first. It was like the first week for sure. And I'm driving through town. Speed limit's 15 or 25 or whatever. And my windows are a little fogged up, but I got a radio now, too. So if I want to drive to school, I'm going to drive in style. I don't care if it's a 1985 Ford Escort hatchback. I'm driving to school. And so I think, I told my mom, my mom probably listened to this, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. Probably isn't something I've confessed before. Um, <laughs> sorry, mom. <clears throat> I told my mom the window was fogged up and I was looking for the defroster, but I really think I was looking at the radio, trying to get the right volume and, and the right song on. And by God, that car in front of me stopped. <laughs> You see, sometimes we don't, when we don't understand the responsibility that comes with the authority, problems come. There's car wrecks that happen. It wasn't bad. Uh, the other guy's car didn't get messed up. My, 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 my uh, escort, it had a damage in the hood. I had a friend who did body work or damage, so I got all fixed. Anyway, it's all taken care of. I don't even think the insurance got involved. Everything was okay. I was only going like 10 miles an hour, because like I said, it was supposed to be so. With kingdom authority comes kingdom responsibility. What happens with Matthew? Like, 
Matthew's, or Matthew, what happens in Matthew with Peter? Like, this has got to be the all-time high. Jesus has just looked at Peter. He's pulled, I don't have keys in my pocket. He's pulled the keys out. He's given Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Peter, we know Peter. Peter's got a self problem. He's feeling good about himself right now. I'm guessing he looks at John and like, eh. Maybe that's not biblical. It's just in the chosen or something. What happens next? Just look, because I said with, with authority comes responsibility. And you see, the problem with kingdom authority is that we struggle a lot of times with self rather than Savior. So Jesus immediately starts to talk to his disciples after he's given, this is literally the next verses, after he's given Peter the keys. I didn't read that one verse 20, but we're starting at 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, then he must be killed, and on the third day, he raised a life. Now, what I say is important for kingdom authority? There's a couple of people that have got this. Submission, where does submission come? By, number Simon, listening intently, and obeying completely what Jesus Christ is saying. Jesus is saying to his disciples, there's a time coming when we're going to suffer. And what does Peter do? Come on, he just got the authority. <clears throat> he can't listen to Jesus. What's he do? I got the keys, Jesus. Come here. Come here, Jesus. Come over here. I got, I got to tell you something. You see, we have kingdom authority when we radically listen to Jesus Christ and do everything that he said. And Jesus is saying, this is what's going to happen. And in verse 22, Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him. Never heard he said, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. You see, we're going to talk about keys. We talk about authority. But there's responsibility that comes with authority. And I will tell you that, that today the Lord wants to give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. I will tell you today that the Lord has authority that he wants you to be living in. I will tell you that today he's got, he's got this offer for you. He wants you to go and make disciples of all nations. He wants you to teach them, to preach the word, to, to drive out demons, to heal the sick. He wants you to do all these things. But man, Peter didn't make it three verses. Before self. One of the most powerful revelations of kingdom authority just happened three verses before one of the most aggressive rebukes we see in scripture towards, towards anyone. That whitewashed tomb thing was rough too. I'll give you that. Because with kingdom authority comes kingdom responsibility. Look at what the scriptures say. This is one of those hard verses that we don't like to look at, but Pastor makes us look at a lot of times. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does what? That's called submission. You see, kingdom authority is revealed through kingdom submission. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, see, we talked about the works, the products of authority. Lord, did we prophesy in your name? In your name, did we drive out demons? In your name, did we perform many miracles? We think that's the kingdom of authority. And I'll tell them plainly. I never knew you. Away from me, we will do this. Because without kingdom submission, there isn't kingdom authority. Kingdom submission is saying, Jesus, I want to listen to everything that you have to say. I want to do anything that you ask me to do. I want to prophesy when you need me to prophesy. I want to, to pray for the sick when you need me to pray for the sick. I want to cast out demons when you need me to cast out demons. But I must have relationship with you. Matthew 28, Luke chapter 10, May 7, 2023. Jesus Christ has commissioned us to be 
That's what he's doing for us today. 2 Corinthians, I love this verse. All this is from God, who reconciled to himself through Christ, who reconciled us to Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. See, the kingdom of God is about letting other people understand his kingdom. And he's going to give us authority here in a little bit that God would reconcile the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he's committed to us the message. That's your key is the message of reconciliation. We're therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though, we, as though God were making his appeal to us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God has given you authority to be his representative where you go. I love the picture of an ambassador. I've shared this before. If, if you go to a foreign country, the ambassador is there for what reason? The United States ambassador. Why are they there? To represent who? America, right? You know in the embassy? What laws govern the embassy? Yes. The United States laws govern the place in which the ambassador serves. What a divine picture of what God has called us to do. He's called you to be an ambassador where? In this world. That's the world where the God of this age, he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. He's called you to be an ambassador today in this place. And he's given you what? The authority. How has he given you authority? He's good. This is great. You were included with Christ when you heard the message of truth and the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a... When we don't use seals anymore. When I, when I was in Kentucky, I don't know where it was. I was going to try and find it. I couldn't find it because, you know, I moved 13 years ago. And I haven't used it since, but I bought an embosser. So I thought it was really cool. And so I could take all the books in my library, and I, and I had to stamp. And I stamped the front page, and it said, from the library of Reverend Stephen Mallory. You talk about it. I arrived. <laughs> Anyone who had that book, knew that book belonged to me? The Reverend Stephen Mallory. <laughs> Scripture said God has placed his, man, he's, he's embossed you. He's placed his, his seal on you. You think about that, like, I don't know much about uh, medieval times, but, but, but I think I've seen it in a movie somewhere before where there was like a seal on a letter, and no one could break that seal, you know what I mean? Like, and everyone who saw that letter knew it was from the king because it was the king's seal on that letter. And whatever was contained in that letter, guess what? King's word and his word was true. We're the ambassadors of Christ. And he sealed us. How? He's marked us with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our, our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's uh, possession to the praise of his glory. God has given you his authority. Today, he's called you to be an ambassador. Today, he's saying to you, there is a key to the kingdom. Now, let's go back a few weeks. I love this. Love it, man. Love it. I got some keys up here. The kingdom of God was like what? In the first parable we read. A man who found a well, this is going to be good. Most of the time when someone hides a treasure, at least that's the way it looks in the movies, they put it where? In a box, in a safe, in a chest. And what does it take to open that chest apart from a sledgehammer? Understanding 
this truth. It's available to you. He said, I've got the key. I need you to go and reveal. I need to take you to take with you the authority of, of the Almighty, the treasures of the kingdom. I need you to reveal them to those who don't know me, those who are lost, those who have never found me. I need you to go and speak truth. I need disciples made in your families. I need disciples made in this community. I need disciples made in this world. And I've given you the key. I've given you the authority and the ability to do it. I mean, you guys can come forward. This is getting good preaching. you to be an ambassador. Man, I've sealed you with the Spirit of God. I've marked you with the Spirit of God who causes you to live differently, to live unlike the world, to do things that the world doesn't, doesn't do. I've given you the Word of God. I've given you the ability to open it up. Man, you want the authority when it's about me. We want the authority when it's going to be fun. We want the authority when people are going to follow me on Facebook. Huh? Well, let's be honest. Do we want the authority when we mean submission and obey? Do we want the authority when it means responsibility comes with the treasure that he's entrusted you with? You see, these things weren't revealed to you by men, but they're revealed to you by the Father, who's in heaven. I'm going to pray this morning. I have a whole container full of keys up here. I was a kid past it once. Sometimes things need to be reminded. I've given keys out once before, I think. I think Peggy might still have one of her purse. Might be wrong. But I want to be reminded. The reason I do this isn't because it's just a fun thing for me. It's because it's a reminder to you. And I want you to put the key somewhere that you'll see. Somewhere that says to you, today I've got authority. Today I've got authority to do what? Whatever the king asks. So guess what? If I've got authority, there's responsibility that comes with this. Maybe I should ask God what I should do today. Maybe I should listen to what Simon is saying. Maybe I should be compelled to do what he's called me to do because I have the authority of the king. Yeah, this world, they might not like what I'm saying. Yeah, the God of the saints might, might come against me. It doesn't matter because I'm, I'm an ambassador of the king. I'm in his kingdom and it's his reign over my life. And so what I do and what happens around me is only governed by the kingdom of God. When I pray a lot of times, I pray the kingdom of God come because there's an authority of this world that stands in the way of the authority of God. And where I am, I believe his kingdom is. So if I'm in his kingdom, his law, that law of forgiveness, that law of redemption, it applies to me. That's what I'm governed by. The law that, that's no longer written on the tablets of stone, but is written on my heart by the Spirit of God. Tell me. The harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. Therefore, the Lord said, workers in your harvest field. Father, this morning as we're in this place, God, these words, what an incredible privilege to be considered worthy of being a representative of you. What an incredible responsibility that you're saying to us this day that we're your ambassadors, that you've marked us with a seal. What remarkable authority and power you've given to us.
God, this morning, just like with Peter, you're offering us the keys. Before we take over, I pray that we submit, that we repent, acknowledging that you are Lord, that we acknowledge those areas where we've been governed by someone other than you. God, that before we take the keys, we listen to what you're saying to us.